In this video, I'll be breaking down just how much horsepower cars have in GTA 5. So in the process of researching for another video that I've been working on in the background, I remembered revisiting some of the old Legendary Motorsports website listings in the Xbox 360 version of GTA 5 to see what bogus stats Rockstar used to describe certain cars. Now in case you didn't know, these stats, which included weight, 0-60 to 60 time, top speed, and a lot of others, were originally what was shown for each car in their online listing, but eventually Rockstar switched over to the stats bars, which are just as meaningless, with the release of the Further Adventures in Finance and Fell update in 2016. Now, although these original numerical stats have been totally wiped from the game, likely owing to how inaccurate they were, I was still interested in how the horsepower of GTA 5's cars could be measured. Now, as it turns out, there's no explicit horsepower variable in the handling metadata of any car in GTA 5, just variables such as F initial drive force, which only roughly indicate how much power a vehicle should have. And also because there's hundreds of other handling attributes and flags at play, there's really no great way of only using a car's metadata to reliably calculate its horsepower. But with some in-game testing, there's actually a much simpler, albeit pretty rough method to calculate a car's horsepower, and this is through its quarter mile performance. Now based on the formulas that you guys see on screen here, as long as you have the car's weight and quarter mile time or trap speed, you can get a rough idea of how much horsepower it's actually putting down. And what's great about this is that the metadata that I previously talked about is already accounted for, as I plan on precisely measuring a car's actual performance on an in-game road. So every Everything was pretty much baked in. So given this finding, and the fact that I could reasonably calculate any car's horsepower using the F mass variable and some quick straight line tests, I got to work. Now in order to utilize the horsepower formulas I showed, I needed a way of reliably recording a car's quarter mile time and trap speed. Now to do this, I used Arma 03's extremely useful race timer mod, which is linked in the description if you want to give it a go, and basically I just did a simple quarter mile drag run in each car that I tested. For the most accurate testing, I fully upgraded each car, including a spoiler, and I also used the handbrake to get the best launch that I could. The timer recorded results for each run that I did, which I then fed into a spreadsheet alongside those formulas to quickly calculate horsepower based on quarter mile elapsed time and trap speed. And then, to get a balanced horsepower result, I took an average of the two methods of calculating power to get a final figure that factored in both time and speed equally. Now, using this methodology, I was able to test a bunch of cars fairly quickly, and the results that I got were super interesting. Now, before we dive fully into these results, I want you guys to keep in mind that these calculated horsepower figures are simply rough estimates based only on the car's quarter mile performance and the mathematical concept of work. This is obviously going to be nowhere near as accurate as measuring a vehicle's horsepower using a dynamometer, but of course we don't have those in GTA 5 and I still thought this was interesting to research, so I stuck with it. Anyways, for the results, first off, once I was done testing about 30 cars, I actually decided to compare the calculated horsepower figures for each GTA 5 car to the power that's made by by its real life counterpart or primary inspiration. Now although this isn't the best point of comparison because GTA 5's cars take inspiration from multiple real life cars, and because a lot of real life cars have different horsepower figures with each trim level, I still looked into it to see if any of the calculated numbers I got actually matched up. And as it turns out, for about a third of the vehicles that I tested, you can see that there was actually a pretty good match between the two figures. For example, the Vapid Dominator, being based off of a mid-2000s Ford Mustang GT, had a calculated horsepower in GTA 5 of just around 305 horsepower, which very closely matched its real-world number of 300 horsepower. The same could also be said for the Vapid Dominator ASP, the Karen Previon, as well as the brand new Anna's 300R, as well as the Western Power Surge motorbike, as their calculated horsepowers were actually very close to their real-world figures. I really wasn't expecting to get that good of a match. However, for the remaining 20 or so vehicles, the differences in power between GTA 5's cars and their real-life counterparts started to get much wider. Now, given that there wasn't a super clear trend and no conclusions that I can make for the remaining cars here, I did decide to explore other specific factors that would impact a car's quarter mile elapsed time and trap speed, thus impacting the horsepower value that I calculated. Now the first consideration I made was for the Nitrous Boost, which is an upgrade that's available for all Arena War vehicles. Testing both the Vapin Imperator and the Anis ZR380, clear horsepower gains are obviously going to be observed when the 100% boost is used. Now for the Vapin Imperator, the boost actually cuts almost 2 seconds off of its quarter mile time, and 
effectively increase horsepower by 46%. Just imagine a 300 shot of nitrous, that's the difference that it made for the Imperator. And also the NSZR380 benefited from the Arena War boost, but to a slightly lesser degree. Now the next factor that I considered was the wheelie boost, which is actually utilized in all muscle cars and drag races. And while I'm not the best at it, pulling off a decently long wheelie in both the Vapid Dominator and the Vapid Imperator increased effective horsepower by quite a lot. The Dominator, for example, jumped from 300 horsepower to just over 450 horsepower with the wheelie boost, and the Imperator's power also increased by a similar amount. And another very long lost speed exploit that used to be used a lot by the drag racing community is stancing your car. Basically, stancing certain cars serves to massively increase its straight line performance via the idea of curb boosting. Basically, in GTA 5's handling model, whenever you go over a bump or your suspension compresses, the game will artificially increase your revs to prevent any speed loss. So, since stance vehicles are more susceptible to bumps, the rapid compressions of their suspension when they hit the ground while stanced exponentially increases their speed. Thus, this resulted in a gain of about 150 horsepower in the Bravado Banshee 900R. This was even more beneficial for the Fister Comet Retro Custom, as stancing this car more than doubled its horsepower, causing a jump from 266 to just under 640 horsepower. Now, the next thing that I looked at was the difference made by the House Special Works upgrade, specifically for the Declasse Vigero ZX and the Ubermox Sentinel XS. Now, although this was a bit tougher to do on console due to the snow and me not getting the best speed reading through the in-game speedometer, the power gains from the upgrade were still very, very clear. Based on my testing, the HSW upgrade increased the Sentinel's horsepower by about 30%, which really wasn't all that exciting. Before the Vigero ZX, however, the HSW upgrade almost tripled its power from about 330 horsepower to around 970 horsepower. Again, these results are slightly skewed due to the testing circumstances, but it's still insane that it makes that much of a difference for this car, and I will say that I definitely do feel it when I drive them. Now, as a fun wrap-up to this video, I also tested a couple rocket-powered cars, namely the Coil Rocket Voltic and the Grotti Vigilante. The Rocket Voltic, with its low weight and huge speed boost from the massive rocket strapped to the back of it, achieved an insane quarter-mile time of 7.91 seconds, but its trap speed was only about 115 miles per hour, mainly because that was the maximum speed the vehicle felt back to when the boost wasn't engaged. The elapsed time horsepower in the Voltic was just over 1,000 horsepower, but the trap speed horsepower was only about 300. The same trend also continued for the Grotti Vigilante, which pulled off an even faster quarter mile time of 7 seconds flat at around 138 miles per hour. Given that the Vigilante is so heavy but is still capable of going this fast, the calculated horsepowers ranged from as high as 9,500 horsepower using the elapsed time formula to as low as 3,400 horsepower using the trap speed formula. When averaged, it turns out that the Vigilante has around 6,400 horsepower, which actually doesn't seem too far off of the real-life Batmobile that was used, and that car was quoted to have around 2,000 pound-feet of torque. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a good horsepower figure for that car to compare, but this is still a really interesting finding, and it's insane that a car like that makes that much horsepower. Now, as a more overall wrap-up to this video, I think that the abundance of negative percent errors that you guys see here indicate that most of the cars in GTA 5 that I tested for this video are actually much less powerful than their real-life counterparts. If you think about it, this kind of makes sense given that most of the cars in this game have extremely low top speeds relative to real life. Basically, they're limited by the level of detail of GTA 5's map and the short render distance of the Rage engine, and this also could have been a clever ploy by Rockstar to artificially make the map seem bigger. This game-wide top speed inaccuracy is also heavily evidenced by the large gaps that I measured between the trap speed horsepower figures and their corresponding elapsed time horsepower figures. Now, although the HSW vehicles do seem super overpowered in comparison to other vehicles in the game, I do think that they do a much better job of depicting a car's real-world performance as their top speeds are just much more realistic. I hope that adding such a feature gives Rockstar better insight as to how to scale the map and also rework the Rage engine so that car performance is a bit more fleshed out and better grounded in reality in GTA 6. And that is going to conclude my exploration of this crazy rabbit hole of trying to calculate the horsepower of GTA 5's cars. If I do get the time in the future, I would like to test even more cars and other potential speed exploits to see what additional trends can be observed in these horsepower figures and you can always check out the spreadsheet with my findings linked down below to see my progress. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video interesting. I know it's a lot different than my normal content, but I've started to delve deep beneath the surface of GTA 5's game mechanics, and I'm absolutely loving exploring the little quirks about this game. Thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you all an amazing 2023, and I will see you in the next video.